All right, let's um, let's kick off. I'll keep an eye on the waiting room, but I'm mindful of everybody's time. So, um, so let me start by. I'll just change this to gallery so I can see everybody. Um, now you'll be happy to know that today is not death by PowerPoint. Uh, we will be going through my live profile, um, so everything that I show you. Uh, will be actionable immediately. So you can either have your own profile open as we go along uh, or I am recording this. You will get a copy of the recording so you can sit back, allow it all to soak in through osmosis and then uh, and then check the recording later on and make any alterations to your own profile that you want. Before we kick off, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet wherever you happen to be. Uh, we acknowledge... Um, uh, elders past, present and emerging and sovereignty was never ceded. So always think it's it's nice and important. And if anyone wants to pop uh, where they're dialing in from, what country, feel free to pop that in the chat and share that with others. I'm from Bundjalung country in northern New South Wales, but I'm coming to you today from Toowoomba in Queensland. So today we are talking about LinkedIn. Um, who is using LinkedIn at the moment? Do is I know Charlene does. I'm Jane, sure. are you using it? Yeah, yeah I use it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so, so LinkedIn's a really interesting platform in that it still has one of the fastest growths internationally. So there's two people joining the platform every minute. Uh, and by far, I think it is the most underutilized platform for business owners, whether that is looking to connect to make sales, looking to network, looking to research. It's an amazing platform that is you know, really underutilized. And there was this whole kind of misnomer for a while there that LinkedIn was really about job searching and being an online resume. But I don't know about you, I certainly find that, you know, there's not a whole lot of job searching going on. Well, it's not in my kind of little bubble, um, but it is definitely a platform that is growing in terms of, you know, building your authority and trust on the internet. Uh, and certainly in uh, LinkedIn, as far as Google is concerned, LinkedIn has what they classify as a perfect website. So for that, it means that it's getting a lot of traffic. Um, it has a long dwell time. So on average, once a LinkedIn user logs into LinkedIn, they're spending around 15 to 17 minutes um, going through the platform and they have an average page visit of three pages. So from a Google point of view, it's a really, really good website for them. So often what we find if you Google your own name and, you know, let, we've all done it, uh, one of the first things that show up is your LinkedIn profile. So you really do have an opportunity to take advantage of some of Google SEO rankings for your own benefit by doing some of the tips and tricks that we're going to talk about this morning. So we do have a small group. I'm not sure if anyone else is going to join us, but feel free to kind of jump in if there's anything specific that you want to know about how could you be using the platform better or what would that mean for your own industry or your particular uh, way that you want to use LinkedIn. Just jump off mute um, and, you know, ask the question because we are here for an hour. So I, there's a lot to get through and I probably won't get through everything that LinkedIn will offer you, but certainly, you know, want to make sure that we clarify and get through as many of your questions as we can. So with that being said, let us crack into, and I'm going to show you this, I'm going to show you my profile. So a little bit about me and why I'm presenting today. So my name is Tracy Sheen. I'm known as The Digital Guide. I'm the author of The End of Technophobia, A Practical Guide to Digitizing Your Business, which won Australia's Business Book of the Year and Best Technology Book for 2021. I'm also the Entrepreneurship Facilitator for the Ipswich region in Queensland. I've been involved in digital marketing and small business technology and advisory since 1990. Uh, I've been a, an advisor for the federal government. I am a Koshi's go-to tech and marketing person for Koshi's Business Builders, um, and I judge a bunch of awards. So currently... We're in the middle of we've just finished New South Wales Tourism. I've got Australian Business Book of the Year and uh, podcasting awards going on at the moment. So it's kind of award season. So I love doing all of that kind of stuff. 
So that's why clearly I have all the answers, right, is what I'm saying. I'm kidding. Uh, so you'll find as we go through today, there are a million ways to skin the LinkedIn cat. And what I'm going to show you is just the way that I found working with clients and for myself, that seems to have the best kind of traction, not to say that there aren't a million other ways that you can go about it. So the first thing that uh, we look for when you want to use LinkedIn like a pro is to make sure that you have claimed your URL. So if you have a look in your URL address, by that I mean you can see with mine, it's linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Tracy Sheen, my name. So you can easily claim your own profile by going to the edit public profile and URL link. And top right hand side of the screen, you'll see here personalize the URL for your profile. By clicking on the little pencil, you can adjust what that looks like. You'll know somebody hasn't done that because behind their name, it'll have a bunch of numbers. Okay, so first thing when you want to use it like a pro, make sure that you've claimed your URL. Next thing that we look for in terms of, um, you know, are you maximizing your time and are you looking like somebody who knows how to use the platform is making sure that you have a cover photo. Now, really easy to create in Canva. If you jump in even to the free version of Canva and type in LinkedIn cover photo, it has all of the dimensions preset and you can adjust that then to suit your own branding. One of my big pieces of advice is keep this fluid. So if you have a new product or service launching or perhaps leading into Christmas, you want to let clients know of your uh, closing hours over Christmas, you can always update this you know, really, really easily. So do keep that fluid. It is uh, prime real estate. So it's one of the first things that people notice when they jump on your profile. So there's a few things that you always want to make sure that you include. And that's the easiest way for people to contact you. So whether that be a website, email, phone number, however you want people to be able to get in touch with you, make sure that that is listed on your cover photo. Always include, obviously, a bit of your branding. So you'll see these little... Um, uh, images are part of my digital guide brand. So you'll see that they pop up kind of everywhere uh, that I want to communicate with clients. Next thing is your profile picture. Um, please keep that professional looking. So if you're unable to obtain a professional headshot, a clean wall behind you or bricks, uh, solid color works really, really well. And make sure that the image is taken from kind of head, uh, shoulders and up. Um, Avoid, please, uh, you and the kids or you and hubby or hubby and you or you and a dog unless you're in that specific industry. So if you're a vet or a vet nurse, it's fine for you and, you know, photos of the fur kids. Uh, if you're in, a, you know, running a dating agency, you and a partner is fine. But really, this is a professional um platform. So make sure that you're keeping those images nice and clean and really, really on brand. Now, one of the big differences that you'll notice between a desktop version and the mobile version of LinkedIn is on the mobile version, uh, if you look and click into your profile picture, you can actually create a little video that goes along with that. So if you look at my profile on mobile, uh, you will see that Suddenly I start moving and talking to you. So that's a really nice way that you can separate yourself from a lot of other users on the platform. Really easy to record. You just do it on your phone as you go to log it in uh, and nice and easy to upload and really does kind of set you apart from a lot of other users. Next thing down is your name and you'll see in these brackets here, they have included, now LinkedIn have included pronouns. So again, depending on the industry that you're in, if you're working across the LGBTQI community or the diversity inclusion community, you may choose to include your pronouns. So in my case, uh, she, her. Uh, however, you do have the option to choose custom. And that's what I've done here to include my brand. So again, a nice way to separate yourself that you can have your brand included in in your, your headline. So one of the things for a while on LinkedIn that we were seeing is with your surname. So if I click into the little button here for a second, um, with the first name and surname, often we were seeing... 
you know, our name with our business name or uh, I help small business owners or, you know, some kind of a thing. LinkedIn are actually now um, limiting our profile reach if we do that as part of our name. So please don't have anything other than your name in the name section. Uh, if you want to include a brand or something like that, it would be where you enter your pronouns. And you can see here, you just change that to custom and you can add in anything you like there. So really nice little way to set yourself apart again. One of the other things you can do, you'll see the option for name pronunciation and you can record your own, you know, you saying how to pronounce your name correctly, which can be really, really handy. However, when you have a name like Tracy Sheen, then not a lot of people can get wrong. It's also a great opportunity to just record a quick little intro. G'day folks, Tracy Sheen, the Digital Guide here. Uh, you know, reach out if you want to have a conversation, whatever it is that you want to say. You've got uh, 10 or 15 seconds. So if you speak like me, you can probably fit quite a bit in in that time. But again, another nice way just to start to build that relationship with people as you are uh, taking them through your profile. Any questions on those first little bits before we start to dig into some of the meat? Yeah, sorry, Tracy. I might have just missed where those where you found those pronouns. Was that in uh, contact info or, or, or just up, up? Yep. So click on your little pencil here, and as you scroll down past your name, you'll have the pronouns here, right. and you can adjust adjust that from she, oh, yeah. her, he, yeah, they, them, the custom. Yeah, I can see. It. Excellent. Um, yeah. Next thing down the list is your headline. You have 220 characters to play with here and there's two big schools of thought. One, you either use your keywords because this is one of the prime places that Google will start to rank your site for keywords and the other one is to write a story. So you can see here I've done a little bit of both. So I help small business owners conquer digital overwhelm author, Australia's Business Book of the Year and Best Technology Book, trainer, speaker, entrepreneurship facilitator. So I know that I am searched for by trainer and speaker. They're two really big keywords for me. Um, I'm also searched, or people will also search for author. Um, and then I also want to let people know really, really quickly what I do. So I help small business owners overcome digital overwhelm or conquer digital overwhelm. So to... to 220 characters to get those little um, icons in there all I do is I write my profile up in Google Docs or Microsoft Word and insert special characters so you'll often see those throughout people's profiles they'll use stars they'll use diamonds they'll use you know something colorful or something to break it up and that's the easiest way to do that so when you're considering rewriting your profile, this is the prime place that you want to make sure that those keywords and things are put into your headline. So knowing what people search for to find you um, is a real bonus here when it comes to creating a profile that gets eyeballs on it. So thinking that one through is, is the prime place that Google will be looking for those keywords. Next thing down the list in terms of what Google are looking for and how you can help your profile stand out is I'm going to jump down and I'm going to jump backwards and forwards here a little bit. But in terms of priorities, it's your headline. And then the next thing you really want to focus on is your about section. Now, with your about section, you've got 2,600 um, characters to use here. So quite a bit of space. Uh, you want to make sure that you're getting as close to filling that space up as you can, because again, Google is going to be looking to this for clues of how they can match your profile with search results that people are looking for. So in terms of priority, we have the headline and then the about section uh, is what Google will start to sift through your profile to match you up to people. You'll notice on the about section, when you click into somebody's profile to begin with, you're served the first couple of lines of their about section before you click in. So one of the ways that you can really maximize your efficiency on LinkedIn and make, uh, make your profile really stand out and ensure that people are getting the most from you that they can in a really short period of time is to make sure that those first lines give the people 
how the best way to connect with you if they want to. So you'll see with mine, if you want to help upskill your small business community and conquer digital overwhelm, drop me a message. Here's my email or here's my phone number. So if nobody clicks in, they immediately can at least call me or email me and they don't need to do any more. They don't need to hunt for information. You don't want to make people work to get in contact with you. So put that out there. Be really bold about what it is that you're looking to achieve. Be very clear with what you're looking to achieve with LinkedIn. So for example, with my profile, I've written my entire profile around I'm looking to connect with councils, chambers, people who service the small business community. So while I work with small business owners directly, I talk to my small business owners on Facebook and I talk to my corporates and my government clients on LinkedIn. So be very, very clear with who it is that you're trying to reach and engage with on LinkedIn because you don't want to muddy the waters. There's an old saying in marketing that if you're talking to everyone, no one's listening. So be very, very clear on my profile. I just want to attract X. So we're going to We're going to talk to and we're going to engage and we're going to communicate in a way that is just reaching that specific target market. Any questions on that? Because that can feel a little like, oh, geez, but I talk to, you know, I work with these guys and I work with these guys. How do I, how do I make that? So is there any questions on, on that bit? Once, once you nail that, it's, it gets a lot easier. Sue? Yeah. I mean, I don't have a a company Facebook because I'm business to business. I've just been using, Mm -hmm. um, basically the LinkedIn to connect with businesses because I'm, I'm, I'm a corporate trainer. So mm-hmm. going with um, stress management and change programs. And so I've just been um, like, I, I don't have a Facebook because I sort of think the decision makers are on or the HR managers or, or training managers, whatever, are on LinkedIn, not mm-hmm. on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So um so I just, um, so it's just interesting to hear you say, hey, because you're business to business as well. Right. And it's interesting that you're using Facebook for the people that you actually, that would employ you or that employ your services. And um, then LinkedIn for what, the, just the government departments and, and, and those sort of organi- peak bodies and organisations and that sort of thing is it who would also employ you. So you, you, wouldn't, so- you wouldn't have the both in there. Correct. So I have two real distinct, mar- well, three real distinct markets I work with. So small business owners directly like you, you might engage me to work with you on a consulting basis, or maybe you want to buy my book or attend a webinar or something like that. So you're typically hanging out on Facebook. So I'm going to talk directly to you on Facebook. On LinkedIn, I'm looking to engage, um, say, for example, a, a good Westpac, you know, huge small business community, but Westpac is likely to to employ me to run training workshops for their small business community. So I want to engage the likes of Westpac or Department of Small Business and Training or Austrade or something like that. I might want to reach them directly to say, hey, I can help your small business community. I can make you look like the hero. So it's very different communique that, that I want to, you know, kind of talk about. I would challenge you to say that your people are on Facebook. Um, but you're getting to them when they're not thinking work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it so typically. That's a, sorry. That's a Facebook yeah. company page, isn't it? Not, not right. just pro because I don't, right. you know, stuff. No, no, no. My, my personal profile is full of memes. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> my, my company page, um, I'm directing the conversation directly to you as a business owner. So, hey, I've got a webinar coming up. Did you read about the Optus breach? This could be, you know, how it affects you, that type of thing. I'm talking directly to you as the business owner. On LinkedIn, everything is very much about, you know, um, here's my latest training. Here's my latest thing with Koshi. Here's how I can help your business community. So it's a very different kind of um, way that I'm communicating. I guess because I'm just starting out, um, I sort of think, well, I'm happy to do, you know, just businesses. um, and then yeah then go into like government departments or big you know sort of so so in that case I would say to you just be really clear on who it is that you believe is going to employ your services 
Right. So is that a mid-tier company, like a, a person that still owns, you're still dealing directly with the business owner, perhaps yep. of a mid-tier company. So you would just be positioning everything that you write and the way that you structure your profile to talk directly to those yep. people, yep. not to the people necessarily that work for them that you are actually going to help. Yeah. Yes, that's right. No, that's right. Yes, it would be more the decision makers, you know, in, and I'm not really sure about you know, mid tier. I'm not. I'm not with that lingo. But you know, that's um, yeah. That um, I'm sure. Is so it's just the size of the company that you yeah, work. Yeah, size with. Of the company. like one to twenty. Yeah, 20 I, I gather it was. The size. Yeah, I'm just not sure what size that means. That's gotcha. all. But gotcha. but yeah, I get what you mean because the way you're talking to them then is different to you know a yeah. smaller business or yeah. yeah. Perfect. Excellent. All right. So the next thing we want to do is is be really clear about who it is that you work with. So if Sue, for you in, in that instance, as it might be, you know, I work with um, manufacturing companies or I work with companies undergoing transformation. I work with companies undergoing management structure, restructure, you know, whatever it is that you do, be very clear. You want to make this for people as binary as you can am I in or am I out are this is this the person that I need to speak to or am I in the wrong spot you know so be very clear with that the other thing here are these are keywords so often um, if you're thinking about it you know a local council or a chamber of commerce perhaps will email to will will be searching on google for um small business trainer um Adelaide area, small business tra marketing trainer or, you know, whatever. So we want to be really, really clear with thinking about our keywords of what people are searching for and making sure that we're giving Google that information on a planet to say, hey, I'm a small business trainer in the Adelaide area, you know, match my profile up with that search. So then you want to think through a little bit of, uh, we call it the name, same claim to fame. So what's your name? What's your same so for me, small business trainer or accountant or lawyer or conveyancer or, um, you know, whatever it's that same that my brain can immediately go, oh, okay, I know where you fit and then claim to fame. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've helped thousands of business owners. I'm a regular on Koshies. I've written a book, whatever your claim to fame is, and that's what sets you apart. So thinking that through as you're structuring your about section, and we're all now writing our about section in first person. So that's been a real change with LinkedIn um, over the last kind of probably 18 months to move it away from the third person into the first person. You'll notice if people are structuring their profile for job searching, a lot of the, the about sections and the profiles are still written in third person because it's written like a resume. So that's one of the ways that you can quickly distinguish between somebody who's using LinkedIn um, from a business perspective, B2B, B2C, build their own business, first person, versus an employee or someone who's looking for a career change will be structuring, or an internal employee perhaps, will be structuring their profile in the third person. The next thing we want to do in our about section is show people a little bit of our insights. So here's some, here's some tips I know about my industry. So you'll see here, and again, not saying that my profile is the be all and end all, but it'll give you a bit of a guide to what's working and what we're seeing that LinkedIn and Google are liking. So you can see here, I've kind of said, you know, that Australia's got 2.1 million business owners, 63% of them are aged over 45, tech happened to them. Um, add to that 102,000 Aussie small businesses are based in regional areas. So I'm, I'm painting a picture of the current status of the industry in which I work. I'm showing that I have knowledge of the industry. I'm showing that I have credibility. I'm showing that I'm aware of what's going on in the space in which I'm saying I can add value to you. Um, I'm then kind of saying, look, sure, there's, there's plenty of training and stuff around. I'm not the only person that does this, but here's what I've noticed. The people that are suffering from digital overwhelm find online solutions adds to their overwhelm so you know we need to be thinking about this a little bit differently so then I've kind of gone into hey I've been doing this since 1990 you know I can be trusted I've partnered with I've 
worked with, I've done this. So I'm now starting to build my credibility um, and showing you why you would lean into working with me. So I've shown you, I know the industry. I know what you're going through. I get why you're here. This is the state of play. I'm now showing you that I have credibility. I can be trusted. I've got runs on the board. And then I'm showing you what I've done to, to be a little bit different. So as a point of, of difference, I'm saying I've created a community for you that you can white label, you can sell, you can do whatever you want to do with. So it's this is my monthly club and this is how I'm going to solve the problem that I've identified for you. And then I'm leaving you with, so what do I want you to do? Well, I'm looking to partner with these types of people. If you fit that, drop me an email. So again, I'm reiterating right back from the start where I've said, you know, here, here's how you get in contact with me. Again, I'm following up. This is what I want you to do. Take action, drop me an email. Um, and I'm finishing up with, you know, I'll help you save time, increase leads, future-proof the business. So I'm really kind of driving home what the benefits are of working with me. And again, you'll notice through the, the profile that I have those little stars or I have the ticks. Again, that's just writing this up in Google Docs or Microsoft Word and inserting a special character. So again, when I'm looking through it, my profile stands out. The other thing that we see that works really, really well is white space. Can you see everything in mine is kind of like a sentence or two? It's not big chunks of text. The reason for that is over 80% of LinkedIn searches now and interactions are done via mobile. So if we have a big chunk of text without a break, it's really hard for our brain to read through all of that and take it in. Short, sharp, lots of white space really makes it nice and easy for our brain to kind of read through things on mobile. So we're always thinking about how can we make it easy for people to engage with our profile. So everything on mine you'll see and, and people who use LinkedIn a lot, you will see a lot of white space. So if you've ever wondered why, why it's written like that, that's exactly why. It's because we know the majority of people are searching and looking for LinkedIn on their mobile phones. All right, let me check in. Any questions about the about section, how that's structured, what that would look like for your business? Just want to acknowledge that. Eleanor has arrived in the room. G'day, Eleanor. How are you doing? Thank you for joining. You've not missed a whole lot, so we're, we're good. Um, any questions about the about section before we move on? I'm good. All good? Awesome. Love that. All right. Okay. Next down the list in terms of priorities. So in terms of what Google are looking for and we're structuring our profile to be picked up and thought about, um, let me just check the chat here. Hi, hi, Eleanor. Um, you are, you can come off mute and chat whenever you want, mate. We're, it's a pretty interactive session, so just make sure that you uh, are getting what you need. So in terms of our priorities, remember we had our headline, so 220 characters, and then we talked about the about section and the importance of, again, um, sprinkling our keywords throughout there. And now we're on to our experience. So we want to build these sections out and make sure that you are putting, again, information about that current role into your experience. These words, again, are keywords. So we're knowing what people are searching for to find us, are looking for. Um, and we can add imagery, which just adds that extra little bit of layer of you know, here's what this role looks like in real life. So to do that, um, we add the, the section, the write-up section in here. Again, that's got around the 2,000 characters, so you've got a lot of space to write there. And then you have the ability to upload your images at the same time. So let me click into, whoops, that doesn't exist. It exists. We were just here. Good grief. Look at that. There you go. Okay, well, we know that's a glitch in the system. Um, so I'll show you that if we added a plus. If we add a position, uh, we can write in, you know, what the role is. 
is it contract is it self-employed is it freelance what is it location start date you can force it to say that that's my current role or you can leave it the same put the industry the description if you want to change your profile headline I typically don't I want that headline to stay um, as I've chosen not to have it um, picked up from an experience section but then in the media this is where we just click on the add media yeah. Okay, my computer is having a moment. So here we go. There we go. And we can just upload media and add our photos from here. Now, if there's a website or anything that you want to add, you can add the link and the include the website there as well. And that will transpose across to the, the experience section. Um, always one one big piece of advice when you're updating all of this make sure that your notify network is off otherwise every time you make a change to your profile it's going to blast your network as a post and say you know uh, Charlene's just made an update Charlene's just added experience Charlene's just changed the headline Charlene's just and it gets a little bit overwhelming for people who are following you you can move things about. So if you click on those up and downs, you can choose the order in which things are shown. So you can choose what sits at the top or what sits wherever else on your profile. And the other thing that works really well for particularly those of us who are self-employed, often we will have different products or services that sit within our uh, umbrella of our business. So for me as the digital guide, I have the Small Business Tech Club, but I'm also known as a trainer and I'm also known as an author. So instead of trying to write the one profile, the one experience as, oh, and I do this, oh, and by the way, I do that and I help these people and you can break those down so you can add other um, experiences and just tick yourself as well as the digital guide or your business name and it will link each of those products then, as you can see, under the one banner. So again, a great way to create your keywords and the things that you know people are going to be searching for while differentiating between the different products and services that you offer. So really, really handy one to think about. So Sue, for you, as you build out different offerings, maybe you do group workshops, so that would be one offering. Maybe you offer in-house consulting. That would be a second experience that you could link onto the business and keep everything built out separately. So people can see, oh, okay, well, she does workshops, she does consulting, she does other things there as well. Any questions on, on those? Again, I've broken it down. I'm thinking about my SEO and what people are searching for in here because, again, Google will look to LinkedIn for ways that they can serve you up to clients when they're, when they're searching for you. Any questions on the experience? You're a quiet bunch. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's go in and have a look at some of the other things that uh, can help us stand apart. So let me go back to my home section. One of the things I really love on LinkedIn that I think is underutilized is the search functionality. Is anyone using search right now? Yep, Charlene is. Yeah. <laughs> so everything I show you is in the free version, by the way. So just know that if you're paying for a version of LinkedIn, um, it just means that you get more of the functionality of what I'm showing you in the search thing. So where I use search and where I encourage my clients to use search is from a research point of view. So let's say, for example, you want to do an outreach campaign. So you've decided that you want to connect with more people. You want to build your network within a certain region. Um so let's say um, from Sue's instance, we're going to put in corporate. Actually, Sue, who would who would employ you? Who would be the person that you would reach out to that would be paying the bills, the decision maker for you? Is it HR? Or... Yeah, I would think it would be HR or training managers. Okay. So, um, yeah. So let's type in human resources. And this is going to bring up a layer down of search functionality so you can see if I know the person I can search by people jobs etc but if I go across to all filters now first degree means that you and I are connected so we don't want to search via that because we've already got that connection 
So second and third degree is what we want to look for. And then let's say, for example, um, Sue, you just want to work in the Adelaide region or South Australia for the yeah. moment. So we're going to type in South Australia. So we're going to narrow this search. Now we're saying, I just want to find people who identify as human resource men or human resources that are second and okay. third degree connections of mine in South Australia. Don't care what company they work for. Not interested in any of that. Now, if you specialize by industry, so maybe you work in corporate culture or transformation just in the IT, you could narrow that down further. Um, otherwise, we're just going to go straight through and hit show results. Whoops, come back. And what this does now is give us a breakdown. You can see about 12,000 results. But this gives us a breakdown of everybody who met that criteria that has human resources in the, uh, you know, in their profile somewhere. So now what I would do if I'm looking to connect with these types of people, I would right click, open them in a new tab, because if I click directly on them, it's going to take me away from this page and I don't want to do that. I've already done my search and I would go and have a look at their profile. Now, Again, as a user, what I'm looking for is have they got a cover photo? Have they got a profile picture? Have they got a headline? And when was the last time? Like how often are they interacting? So I can see here all activity. Um, Chantel's liked this post, but it doesn't say when. So let's see when the last time Chantel posted. Three weeks ago. Okay, so relatively active in the grand scheme of things. If that said six months or three months, I probably wouldn't bother connecting because it would tell me that Chantel's not actually that active and not really that engaged on the platform. When you see that little gold in, that means she's paying, okay? She's a paid user or they're a paid user of LinkedIn. So once I've identified that Chantel is a good connection, um, then I would reach out and I would personalize my connection request. So if I'm on a desktop or a laptop, I hit connect and then I add a note. And here's where I'd say, hey, Chantel, uh, been, you know, really enjoyed the last post that you shared about XYZ. I'm going to show them a reason why I'm connecting. I'm going to give them a reason. Really enjoyed the post, saw you speak at a thing, you know, um, read a latest article, heard you on a podcast, whatever it is, give me a reason because we all get so many connection requests. You want to stand out and kind of say, this is why I'm connecting with you. Um, at that point, I'd hit send. Now, one thing to note, if you're doing this on your mobile, if you hit connect, it's going to shoot a connection request without the ability for you to personalize it. So you will see on the mobile, there's three little dots. If you click on that, it'll give you the option to then personalize the invite and, invite, and that's where you do it on the mobile. So that's, um, that's one of the ways that I think, you know, LinkedIn really kind of stands apart in terms of it's a great research tool. Okay, so it is a bit of legwork. Um, I would send no more than probably five connection requests in a day, particularly if you haven't been actively engaging people. Um, LinkedIn have a trigger. It's around somewhere between 20 and 50 connection requests in a day where they start to kind of go, this is looking a bit spammy. So just you want to fly well under the radar. So around that five a day, um, but I would certainly build this in, this whole research and outreach thing into part of my overarching marketing plan. So I usually spend probably 15, 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn. Part of that is interacting with other people's posts. So I'm always making sure that I'm finding people that I can comment on um, just to be active. I will post around three times a week is optimum for a personal profile on LinkedIn. Uh, and then I want to make sure that I'm spending, you know, five, 10 minutes a day just going through, having a bit of a look at people that I could connect with and sending a few connection requests on there. Any questions around the search or the outreach? Everybody's so quiet. Wow. Okay. I'm either doing a good job or you're all like, oh, there's so much I have to do. It's so, um, just, so that, so you just, in the search bar, you just put 
whatever you're looking for, training manager, human resources, then you go to all filters and that's where you filter through what you want. Correct. Right. Yep. Yep. So if I type in training manager, now yep. the only thing to know, Sue, with the free version, yes. uh, you only get, and they don't actually tell you how many searches you get per month, but it resets at the start of the month. So the more you use it, the more searches you end up getting. So it's a it's a bit of a rubbery rule with LinkedIn as to what that looks like. Right. But it's around about 10 searches that you can do in a month and then it resets at the start of the month. 10 searches a month? Around wow. about 10 a month, yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Right. So if I type in training manager and then hit all filters, I'm going to go second and third connection. Again, I'm going to narrow it down to if there's a geographical area that I just want to work. So... Let's even go a little further. So Adelaide. Yeah. And then show results. And so that's even breaking it down to Adelaide from South Australia, but changing it from HR to training manager. I've still got 8,000 results. I'm not going to get through all of those yeah. you know, in, a, in a month. Yeah. Um so then right click have a bit of a read and choose some people that you can you can connect with yeah. um one of the big differences between the free version and the paid version of linkedin is in the paid version you can save those searches so you're not having to come back in and go That's oh right, now i've already you. looked at those people like where am i up with that so, yeah right so so it's best to if it's only 10 a month that you're allowed it's best to leave that sort of search up on your browser right and then so like not go into it every day so you're trying to do 30 30 times a month you know yeah yeah, um, yeah. and I would just you know all I do with clients is I say just make a note of the last person that you you know looked at so mm. when you come back in the next day you're not going now have I looked at Curtis where am I at with yeah. Curtis you know so it's just that that true a spreadsheet or something like that Right. Where you yeah. know, and maybe even you know uh, that way you can. What what's your uh, strategy in terms of if you've connected or requested the connection with a note and then they haven't replied or anything? Would you chase that up two weeks later, and or would you never no. chase it up? No. no, I don't chase it up. So no. the the kind of the way that LinkedIn works is once they accept your connection request. Mm -hmm. At that point, like within about 24, 48 hours, I would then send a follow up like, hey, Sue, thanks so much for accepting my connection request. Um, you know, look forward to getting to know you or get look forward to following your work on LinkedIn. Um, don't then immediately go in with the like, oh, I do this and look at my stuff. Because again, we all get those, you know, as soon as someone accepts your connection request, they get a, hey, buy my stuff. This is what I do. So yeah. just follow up and say, you know, thanks for accepting my connection request. I look forward to following your posts. So yeah. then for the next couple of weeks, I make sure that I, you know, actively engage. So not stalkerish, but, you know, once a week or so, I would find a post that I could comment on of theirs. Um, and then in a couple of weeks' time, maybe three weeks after I've engaged with them a few times, then I might out, you know, reach out and say, hey, so I've noticed you post, post a lot about this. Um, I found an article you I thought you might be interested in or I've heard this podcast. If you had to listen to this, it's great. Or, you know, hey, I'd really love to have a 10-minute chat with you and pick your brain about this. You know, give them a reason without trying to sell to them again just to develop that connection that connection with them and that relationship particularly if you think it's something that could develop into a thousands of dollars worth of yeah. business yeah sure so how long after sort of commenting on their posts and would you say you know, how about a chat you know like usually a couple of weeks oh, a couple of weeks you'd, yeah. you'd actually yeah 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 so I'll make sure so if you and I've just connected and and I think you're a a good target for me and I say that in all you know nicest possible yeah. way if I think you're a good target for me then I'm going to make sure over that couple of weeks that I'm following your profile and I have had a reason to engage yeah. um, and once I've done that a couple of times two three times then I'm going to shoot you an, uh, an in-message, like through Messenger on, on LinkedIn and say, hey, Sue, really lovely to be connected, really enjoying following your work, particularly like that you talk about X. 
hey, I found this article I thought you might be interested in. By the way, I noticed we're both based in Adelaide. You know, I'd love to grab a coffee sometime and, and have a chat about what you're seeing in the industry or, you know, give them a reason to, to kind of reach out or, you know, could we catch up over Zoom? I always find asking them if you can pick their brain about something. Yeah. Is, is a nice way that they feel like, oh, she, she wants my opinion on something. Like people are really happy to give you their time mm. if they feel like they're adding value. But if you come in and say, hey, you know, I offer corporate training packages. I'd love to chat about what you're looking for. I'm immediately going, mate, I don't know you, you know, like we're just connected here. But, hey, I'm developing a bit of a survey about such and such. I'd love to pick your brain for 10 minutes on what you're seeing in the industry. Of course, I'm going to give you 10 minutes. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Excellent. Anyone else got anything on that? Sue, you're very, not Sue, Jane, you're very quiet. You, are, you okay there? Because I know you're looking at this from a, a full-time kind of point of view instead of business to business. Yeah, sorry. I, I had to take a uh, phone call earlier on. Um, That's okay. so I, I'm not sure what I've missed, but... um. Are you going to, yeah, I've got, the, I've, I work full time, but I also have a side hustle. So one of my questions is, can you have two LinkedIn profiles? No. No. You, you can, but it breaches terms of service. So if they find the second profile, then you're likely to be booted off the platform. Do you want to describe like what, are they, are they similarly linked or? No, no. Okay. So my full time job, I'm business mentor. Uh-huh. Um, under a government scheme, the um, self-employment assistance scheme, as you probably know, and 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 then side hustle I've got, um, which I haven't launched yet, is a skincare company. Okay, so I would just pick which one you want to be known for on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. You, I think you, I think my my professional job is probably more 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 practical. Yeah, you you certainly can. Um, you know, so so there would be nothing for me to say that you couldn't link the side hustle that you're developing because from a business mentor point of view with with the SEA program that would add credibility hey I'm doing this too you know so yeah. so you could certainly list that as experience of you know developing my own range and this is what I've gone through blah 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 and you could talk about that in your posts as a way that you would help mentor people through the process Hey, I get this too. I'm going through it. This is what I'm going through. This is what I've seen. This is how I help my clients overcome that type of thing. So I think you could merge them in that respect, Ooh. but you would choose the one area of the profile that you want to focus on and build the profile around that. Okay, great. That's that's really helpful. And and what about hashtags? Have you covered that or are you going to? So hashtags on LinkedIn, great point. So hashtags on LinkedIn now are useful. Um, so hashtags for anyone who's unfamiliar with them uh, is just a search term. So hashtag small business, you can actually search for that in the search bar um, and it will show you all of the posts that have been created. Because I know Wendy puts her hashtags within the text that she is writing rather yeah. than bottom so is so you should do it at the bottom now um okay. so only because just for ease of use of your readers um okay. readers don't like seeing you know amazing to see my hashtag small business team it just it it, it plays with our mind uh, so from that point of view separating them at the bottom but you can see I can search on that hashtag and it will show me you know I can choose then to follow that and it will show me all of the posts that have been created with that hashtag so that's kind of a nice way that you can look at it um, five hashtags as a maximum on LinkedIn three yeah. to five is is prime if you have switched on have you heard about creator mode no. So if you look at your profile under, um, so as we go down, you'll see the section where you, you know, you update all your contact information. You've then got analytics. And then underneath that, you've got resources. So one of the things that you'll see under resources is creator mode. And you can switch that on. Once you've switched that on, underneath your headline, you will get this little bit. Can you see it says talk of, talks about and then it's five hashtags? Yep. 
So that will then, that tells me if I'm looking at your profile that you have creator mode switched on and it tells me that these are the topics you talk about. So um, Jane, for you might be um, hashtag business mentoring, um, mm -hmm. hashtag small business, hashtag skincare maybe, you know, if you wanted to. Um, so then when you're posting, when you're creating your own posts, you would use those five hashtags or a, a, a mix thereof within your post to say, I'm linking this to, to show you that this is the content that mm -hmm. I talk about, that I create. Mm -hmm. So that's where you switch that on under resources then. Um, and you do have the ability to switch on other resources if you want to, but creator mode is probably the big one. So if you click on creator mode, um, you can see the hashtags that are available to you. It also shows you other creator tools that you can then access. Things like LinkedIn Live, which is the same as Facebook Live. So I can go live on LinkedIn Audio events, which is their version of Clubhouse or podcasting. I can create a newsletter and people can follow me on LinkedIn. So again, like a Facebook business page, you can follow me instead of connecting with me if you choose to. So that they're only options that are available if you have creator mode switched on. Excellent. All right. The next thing I want to cover because we are, are fast running out of time here and it is an important one is the value of company pages versus personal profiles. So as a business owner, the big reason we would have a company page now is to be able to create events. So one of the things that LinkedIn has done, which is excellent, is if we create an event on LinkedIn, we now have the ability to use a LinkedIn registration form, which means as a LinkedIn user, I can click to say I want to go to your event and it will populate my details into your registration form, which I can then export legally from LinkedIn and add you to my database. Can I so, ask a question on yeah. that? Tracy, because sure. currently you can still put an event on LinkedIn um, like without the company page, but um, it's just a matter of linking it to Eventbrite or whatever, isn't it? Like, um, yeah. Correct. So yeah. this um, this works then very similar to, so you can see here's an event um, that I've created. Like let's have a look at so it kind of looks like a Facebook event, right? So I've still got my, my thing. The difference is on here, I can invite my um, people who follow my, my company page or I can invite my, but you can see this is still linking out to a Zoom registration. Now, yeah. I've not chosen to use the LinkedIn registration form with this because this is a, a something I'm doing for another company. It's not mine, but in the... Um, it, you, on the personal profile, you can't use a, they don't have the ability to set up an event as such. You've got to, as you said, link to Eventbrite or Humanitics or something like that. Whereas on LinkedIn, you can set it up directly and you can use a LinkedIn registration form. So one of the big things with LinkedIn is you can't export contacts. It breaks the terms of service. So an easy way to get people to register for your event is if I've just got to tick a button and it populates my LinkedIn stuff into your registration form, I'm far more likely to register for that event. So it, right. it's just a nice, easy thing to do right. instead of having to go across. It's for them than, than having a link to Eventbrite. Now I've got to click across to Eventbrite. I've got to enter my details three times, blah, 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 blah. So this is just a tick. Done, I'm registered. It adds to my calendar. I get all the details I need to know. But now I've also got your information to export to add to my mailing list. So really, really nice little feature. Uh, yeah, there. I see. Yeah. Um, otherwise, things are fairly similar. You know, please put your cover photo in. You've got a headline as well. Um, you can invite people. You get 250 credits per month to invite people to follow your page. The analytics are pretty average on, on LinkedIn pages right now, to be perfectly frank, so I don't pay a lot of attention to them. Um, the only other thing to be aware of with a company page is that people can link themselves to your page as a... Um, as an employee. 
So this can be a bit of a challenge and we have seen it happen. Say people are job hunting and they want to buff out their resume a little or they want to, you know, make it look like they've got more experience in the industry. They may go and associate themselves as an employee of your brand. Um, it doesn't happen a lot, but it can happen. So, and there's nothing you can do about it, you know, other than to reach out to that person and go, hey, Francisco, I think you've got the wrong company. You know, we've never worked together. What's going on? Um, Francisco is actually my AV guy, so I'm happy to have him there. But in that instance, you know, just be aware that, you know, people can link themselves to your company um, and you can't do anything about it. So, now, in terms of um, posting and frequency and what's, what LinkedIn likes and what they don't like, um, around three times a week, as I said, for personal profiles is excellent. Uh, LinkedIn do not like third-party links shared in their content. Um, so if you're going to share a third-party link, you will often see in people's profiles, they'll say, uh, link available in comments. That's because LinkedIn don't want you moving away from the platform. Okay, so I'll give you an example of that. Let me go to... I've been testing this theory again lately, so you'll see some of mine. I've not been doing it, and my reach is sorely hindered by it. So yesterday I was running, a, two days ago I was running a webinar for uh, Regional Development Australia, um, and you can see I popped the link directly in my post, and you can see here I've only had 52 people that it has reached. Usually my content is in the thousands that it reaches. So the moment I share a third-party link, um, so here's the latest one I did with Koshis. Now, because my, my theory on this one is because it has the words, you know, Koshis Business Builders in it and they have 40,000 people odd that follow their page, I'm not as poorly affected. But just be aware if you're going to share a third party link, um, please do. So like this link to register is in the comments. So you'll often see this from people who use the platform a lot. Um, so can I ask a question on that, Tracy? This is not yeah. in regard to linking an event where they go to Eventbrite. This is in regard to linking to register via someone else's business is that right no anything so even eventbrite so if you're going to do a post about hey i've got an upcoming workshop um you know click over to eventbrite to register then i would put the link in the comments i would say link to register for the event is in the comments right. and then just put the you know here's the link to take you to eventbrite right and you'll find that your reach is um, you know, increases when you when you make sure that you pop that into the comments. Essentially, LinkedIn just don't want you clicking off the platform. Yeah, right, right. So, so, so the longer you can keep them on. Yeah. yeah. So what happens when you share like um, you know, a post from say somebody else's um company page, for instance? It is that hindered at all by how many people you reach? Yeah, they still don't like it. So if it's a if it's a LinkedIn company page, it is. It's not yeah. As, yeah, it's not as bad. Mm -hmm. Um but really you you got to kind of think of like um what's the value in it for you and for your audience of you just sharing. So there's there's five different ways we can share content really. There's creative, which is where we've like written the blog or something ourselves and everything's from scratch. There's curated, which is where we found something that adds value to our community and we just curate the information across. There's commentated, which is where we found the the information, we think it's relevant and now we're adding commentary around, you know, hey, there's a great um, session coming up by these people. I'll be attending, you know, for these reasons, commentary. There's celebration, which is when something within your network is going on, not just you, but maybe a client or um, 
a supplier or a partner or something. We're celebrating something that's going on in the community. And then there's commercialized, buy my stuff. You know, I've got this upcoming workshop. I've got this upcoming whatever, buy my stuff. Create, curate, commentate, celebrate, commercialize. They're the five C's when it comes to creating content. And it's thinking about making sure that we've got an even split so we're not hounding our audience with the same type of stuff over and over and over again. So it's just really where can we add value, always thinking about who is it that we're writing our profile and creating our content for and making sure that we're coming back to that point the whole time. Am I adding value? Am I adding value? Am I adding value? And making sure that we're getting that split across the, you know, it's not just about me. Here's a great article written from this person. I really like that they blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, tag them in and make sure that you're adding value that way. We are kind of at time. There is so much more I could talk about, but hopefully that's at least given you some food for thought to, to start with. Any questions? I'm happy to hang around for an extra few minutes if there's anything in particular that you want to focus on or, you know, double down or check or anything. So, Sue, anything else from you? Uh, I was just going to ask how can we, you know, get in contact with you or how could we have a chat to, like, because um, I found this really um really useful actually and would love to sort of um you know some help in my business basically to yeah, sure. uh, to get out there and and expand my reach so how could we do that is there like a disco discovery call we could do with you or connect with me on linkedin and i'll shoot you the calendar and like to book a discovery call with me okay. so happy to do that right. so just um you know you saw you saw my profile on yeah. linkedin i'm happy to chat it and chuck it in the the box so you don't have to go searching for me I mean I'm yeah. hard to miss with the bright red hair to be honest but you know <laughs> um so let me pop that in chat for you so very happy to I can send you a, a booking to to make 30 minutes and have a bit of a chat happy to do that um obviously there's also the book as well you know that that has a lot of whole section on LinkedIn in there as well mm -hmm. um any any questions though immediately that you've got that I can clarify for you? I have one question. Yeah, shoot, Charlie. Um, all it was was when you were in doing the setup with the headlines, you've got the little video in your profile. Mm -hmm. When I clicked on my one, I didn't have that. Yeah, so you, the only way you can upload that is through your mobile. Ah, oh, so they go into your profile. <laughs> yep, go into your profile on your mobile. Um, and, and you'll see it when you click into it so when you do the little um yeah. plus button, the, the little pencil button beside you on the mobile it comes up as an option to upload the video there yeah okay thank you well done jane anything from you uh no that's been fantastic thank you tracy i'll i'll watch the recording thing i missed a few things but yeah yeah, I'll um, definitely have a look for you on LinkedIn. It's been great. Perfect. Love to connect with you all. Let me know how you go. Love to see the updates on the profile. So once you've made any changes, you know, feel free to tag me in a post or shoot me your link to your, your profile in LinkedIn. Happy to have a, a little look and say, you know, tweak this, change that, looking great. And um Stay stay up to date with what's going on with the Epip Switch. We've got a bunch more webinars and workshops coming up over the next few weeks. So hopefully I'll see you in the Digiverse. <laughs> Take care. See you, oh, folks. Bye. bye. bye.